Hi guys, it's Megan, and today I'm back with another things to do in your board video. I have nine super easy projects to show you guys today, and there's a good chance that you probably already have a lot of the supplies to make them. But before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know that I finally made new merch. The link's in the description, and without further ado, let's just get into the video. The first project you could try when you're bored is to paint tie-dye. All you need for this is a few different colors of paint, and either a piece of paper, a canvas, or anything that you can think of to paint on. Start by drawing a spiral on your paper with a pencil. Then, use a flat paintbrush to make small strokes along the edge of your pencil lines. This would work best with a fan brush, but I didn't have one, so I just used a flat paintbrush. I used four different colors for this, red, yellow, green, and blue. Whenever I have paint left over from a project, I always like to use it to make backgrounds in my sketchbook. This is a nice, quick and easy project to help you use up some of that extra paint. This page took me about 20 minutes in total. I'll probably either leave it plain or paste another drawing on top. Another project you could try is this pressed flower vase. To make this, you'll need a glass or plastic container. I used an old Snapple bottle. You'll also need some Mod Podge, nail polish remover, and some pressed flowers. I showed how to press flowers in one of my other things to do in your board videos, and in case you missed it, Really all you have to do is put the flowers between two pieces of parchment paper and iron them on the lowest setting for 5-10 to 10 minutes. When that's done, rinse out your container. If there's a label, you can go ahead and peel that off. If you have trouble getting the sticky part off the jar, try using a little nail polish remover to help you. Once the jar is ready, use some gloss Mod Podge to glue on the flowers. If you don't have Mod Podge, just use some Elmer's glue. Be super gentle with this because you don't want to rip them. And the last time that I did this, people got kind of mad at me for like picking the flowers, which is a little bit silly to me because if I didn't pick them, my dad would just run over them with a lawnmower. I don't know. People are weird. I just thought I'd point that out. But anyways, here's how the finished bottle turned out. I think I'm going to use this as a vase to put fake flowers in in my room. I know that the yellow doesn't really match, but I've been thinking of incorporating a little bit of yellow to brighten it up in there. The next project I made was this paracord water bottle holder. This was surprisingly easy to make, and it's the perfect craft for summer. For this project, I used 4 feet of paracord, a carabiner clip, an adjustable cord stopper, a lighter, and scissors. First, measure out 4 feet of paracord. Fold that in half, and measure 10 inches away from the fold. Position it so that the fold is facing you and make a starting knot at the 10 inch mark. It's kind of like tying a shoe. Make a loop with the right string and cross the end over the front, and make a loop with the left string, bringing the end behind. Bring the ends of the cord through the loops as you can see here, and add your carabiner clip to the knot. With the loop still facing towards you and the clip at the top, use the two tails to make square knots. Make a four with the left cord Bring the right cord over the end, behind the middle, and up through the loop. Then, make a backwards four with the right cord, and bring the left cord over, behind, and up through the loop. Repeat this pattern until you run out of cord. To finish, cut off the loose ends and secure them with a lighter. Thread the cord stopper on the bottom, and you're all set. These can be used on almost any type of water bottle, from the plastic ones to a hydro flask. If your water bottle has a handle, you could wrap it like this, or you could put the cord under the lid. You could also use this with regular plastic water bottles too. If I was going to make this again, I'd probably make the loop between 6 to 8 inches instead of 10, but otherwise I think this will be super useful for hiking this summer. I saw this project on TikTok last summer, and I never got a chance to make one. For this project, you'll need perler beads elastic, a needle, and some strong glue. Arrange your perler beads on the pegboard with a few spaces between each one. Then, just iron them as you normally would. When you peel off the parchment paper, some of the beads might stick to it. Spread them out a little, and iron the other side. Iron the other side of each bead until you have a bunch of flat circles. If you have thinner elastic, you could skip this step, but mine made it pretty difficult to get through the beads. So, I used this pointy tool that came with my Cricut machine to poke holes in each bead. I'm telling you, even if you don't have a Cricut machine, these tool sets come in handy way more than you'd think. 
Once all my beads were done, I just threaded them onto my elastic and tied a triple knot at the end to make it extra secure. I also put a little E6000 glue on the knot to make sure it wouldn't come undone. And here's how my finished bracelet turned out. Not gonna lie, this definitely wasn't as easy as people made it look on TikTok, but I really love how these turned out. The next project I made was this Spongebob porthole art. You could do this with any character or scene. I just thought that the ocean theme would make some cute wall art for summer. First, draw a circle onto a piece of cardboard. Cut that out and cover it with a layer of gesso. If you don't have gesso, you can use some white acrylic paint instead. When that dries, use a pencil to sketch out your design. I just looked up SpongeBob porthole for the window and looked up SpongeBob jellyfishing for the scene outside. But like I said earlier, you could do any sort of underwater scene that you'd like. And once I had my sketch, I just painted it. This part is really self-explanatory. I just painted the main sections with my Arteza acrylic paint and added the line art with Posca pens. Which, has anyone else noticed that Posca pens are like ridiculously expensive now? I don't know what happened, like maybe it's just Amazon, I don't know if it's everywhere, but they've like doubled in price since the last time that I bought them, which is kind of annoying since I'm starting to run out of some of them. So if you know of any like good, cheaper alternatives to Posca pens, please let me know. But anyways, here's how the finished piece turned out. If you don't have canvases, cardboard's the next best thing. And the best part is, you probably already have some at your house. I thought this next project was pretty cool. All you need is some construction paper. Go outside and collect a bunch of different plants. I found that leaves and pine needles work the best. Grab a few rocks to weigh everything down. Put a rock on each corner of your paper so it doesn't blow away. Then start arranging the plants on top. Put a rock on top of each plant so it won't blow away either. Now that everything's on there, wait about two to three hours. And when you come back, your paper should have changed color a little. Remove all the plants and you should be left with something like this. This is essentially a fake sun print. If you wanted to get really fancy, instead of using plants, you could make a stencil to put on top so that the sun could bleach out the design. Another thing you could do when you're bored is to paint an old CD. I'm sure most of us have a few of these lying around. We've been cleaning up a little bit during quarantine, and I found about five boxes of these at my house. I wanted to try making a clear CD, so I got some packing tape, scratched the top of the CD with some scissors, and use the packing tape to peel off the silver part. Just line the tape up with the edge of the scratch and the silver part should peel right off. Repeat this until all of the silver part is off of the CD. I don't know why, but my CD had all of this like blue stuff all over it. And I don't know if they're just like that or if it's because these were made in the year 2000, but I just used a Clorox wipe to scrub that off. And now for the fun part, which is actually painting the CD. Since it's clear, I traced it onto a piece of paper and sketched out my design. I taped the CD back on top of the sketch and started painting. I used my Arteza paints for this again. I like these because they're a little bit thicker than the craft paints, so you usually only need one or two coats. I did layer a few different shades of green and yellow to give the flowers more dimension though. And you don't have to make the CD clear. I've seen lots of cool ones where people just paint directly on top of it. Those might make nice sun catchers. You could hang them above the window and let the silver side reflect the light. But here's how my finished CD turned out. Let me know in the comments, if you remember, what was the first CD that you ever got? I'm pretty sure mine was when I was like 5 or 6 and it was a Hilary Duff CD. The next project is this flower bracelet. I don't know about you guys, but I have a ton of bracelet making stuff left over from last summer. Start by cutting a piece of string that you can wrap around your wrist at least 4 times. This will be the center string. Cut another piece of string that can wrap around your wrist about eight or nine times. Fold it in half and place it about an inch or two below the end of the first string. Start the bracelet by making square knots, just like we did with the paracord keychain. When you've done about four or five, add on the beads. Add one bead to the center string and three on each side. Make another square knot below that and your first flower is done. Repeat this pattern, doing four or five square knots then a flower until the bracelet is slightly shorter than your wrist. Cut the ends of the cord and carefully melt them with a lighter. To finish the bracelet, bring the ends together like this and add a piece of tape to the top and bottom. Make a few square knots to create an adjustable closure and melt the ends to secure them. Tie a knot at the end of each string and your bracelet's ready to wear. This is one of my favorite bracelets that I've made and it was one of the easiest too. 
I used many pony beads for the flowers, so I needed to make about seven for my bracelet. If you use normal sized beads, you'll probably need less. The last craft is kind of a different take on something that I used to make at summer camp as a kid. For this project, you'll need a hot glue gun, a black marker, and three popsicle sticks. I had some that were green already, but you could paint the plain ones green too. You'll also need some yarn. I used three different colors, but you could use as many or as few colors as you'd like. Start by gluing the popsicle sticks together like this. Then tie a piece of yarn to the center. Wrap the yarn five or six times between each corner to cover the center of the turtle. Then start weaving. If you've ever made a god's eye, this is basically the same thing, except we're using six popsicle sticks instead of four. Wrap the yarn over and behind each popsicle stick, making your way around. Just wrap front, back, front, back until you're ready to switch colors. To switch colors, all you have to do is cut the end of the yarn that you're working with and tie on your new color with a double knot. Just keep weaving, and when you're done, tie the yarn around the popsicle stick and slip the tail through the back. Add a face and any extra details with a black marker, and you're all set. I think these would be really cute if you made a whole bunch of them and made a little turtle garland. So thank you guys so so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!